questions before we start. We are looking at uh, we were looking at sources for atomic absorption spectroscopy and also emission two kinds of sources basically continuum and line sources um, some examples that day I showed you the deuterium lamp okay and we from your table you can see that it's a source of UV tungsten usually used for visible and then you have your sources for the IR spectroscopy, infrared spectroscopy, the argon, xenon, mercury lamps are higher intensity. That means at a certain wavelength you get the amplitude. If you think about the wave, huh, the electromagnetic wave, the amplitude is a lot higher, higher intensity. So these are used in fluorescence. What dif big difference do you understand between the, those between those two sources in terms of the wavelength at which uh, the wavelength of light given out by those two sources because when you think of sources it's giving out light okay source of light Not, not really one. When you say one, that means the copper lamp has only one, one wavelength. Not so, right? Like maybe if you have the copper lamp, it'll be, you know those, when you think about the emission, you have to think about the energy level diagram, those many lines. But they are light at particular wavelengths, okay? So maybe for copper, you have three to four and you have some, some other wavelength, 330, 600 maybe, but they are at particular wavelengths. Compared to the continuum source, like the deuterium or tungsten, how is it different from the line source? I mean, you have to get this straight. You can say it, but you don't know what it means. That makes it more difficult to, you know, in your understanding of the, of the whole thing. Continuum source. What about the light? We're talking about the now the radiation given out by the continuum source. How is it different from the line source? Continuous. That means you have it gives out light over a wide range. Okay, you must get used to saying all these things, Because huh? you're going to be writing, saying it and writing it down. Wide range means wavelengths maybe from. Uh, UV visible slightly into the IR, you know, large range. You have met and and it's giving out light at all those at all those wavelengths between that range. Unlike line, only particular, particular wavelengths only, not continuously. Every wavelength you get light. Okay, so continuous, continuum wavelength uh, sources. You must think wavelengths at every wavelength in that range you get light. Uh, line sources, okay, you have lines or bands used in atomic absorption spectroscopy, uh, all the things that involve at atoms, whether the atoms, you measure how much the atoms absorb, how much it emits, you use line sources. Providing UV and visible um, light in the UV and visible region, you don't talk about line sources in IR. In IR, you use the, your IR sources. These are some of the examples. Okay, if you have not read up over the weekend, have you looked up lasers? Light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. So I hope if you have not done it, you will do it this week on how to how lasers get their light. Mm, maybe as a as a short to make sure you read it before Wednesday half a page how lasers work everybody has bought the textbook how much was it 71 70 60 60 3 okay of course you didn't get your 200 dollars huh? your 200 dollars is all gone already i suppose for books okay then so those two sources of light then we talk about the wavelength selector Think wavelength selector is like a filter. Why do we have a wavelength selector? From the name, to select a certain wavelength. Okay, 
we want only a certain wavelength how do we do that um, but that's the ideal case if I want to measure the absorption of copper at 324 nanometers I want to make sure that the wavelength that falls on the detector is only 3 to 4 then only I can know how much is being absorbed okay if I want to measure at a certain wavelength I want to make sure the light only that wavelength falls on the detector eventually so how do I do that as, as, as mentioned here it's an ideal situation uh, you know it's impossible you cannot get that only 3 to 4 and we will see that what we actually will get is a band as we said what is a band compared to a line few wavelengths together but very close to each other that you cannot distinguish no instrument can distinguish the wavelengths in a band okay so I the real situation is you will get a narrow group of wavelengths so how do we now get this uh, select the wavelength of our interest is either use filters or monochromators and that's the first part they will look at is uh, several kinds of filters that are used uh, in wave as wavelength selectors when we use the filters what we are going to see is when we choose a filter for the copper line 3 to 4 nanometers so we say ideally we should get only light at that wavelength assuming that this is 3 to 4 but in actual in the real situation we are going to get a light emitted where the maximum is at the set wavelength 3 to 4 3 to 4 nanometers but we also get some wavelengths below lower than 3 to 4 and higher than 3 to 4 so we get a range a band uh, of wavelengths however they are uh, narrow a narrow range of wavelengths okay not like your tungsten lamp where you have over a wide range here is only over a narrow range centered at your chosen wavelength so if we were to say that is the maximum transmittance here is transmittance you're talking about light nah? you're looking at how much light goes through this is the wavelength that you choose so that will be a maximum transmittance if you were to now look at halfway through so if this is maximum transmittance you look at half the peak max uh, transmittance and then you look at the range of wavelengths that are given out by your source that is what is defined as effective bandwidth for that filter for the whatever wavelength selector that you're using because even though you set at a certain wavelength in actuality you get a range of wavelengths coming through and you you describe the how wide the band is by the effective bandwidth so um, ideally you want this effective bandwidth to be as narrow as possible because we said we want only one wavelength but yet we cannot have only one wavelength so we try to uh, make it such that uh, have it such that effective bandwidth is as small as possible so the bandwidth is the radiation output by a filter or a monochromator because two kinds of wavelength selectors either use filters or monochromators so back to the definition of that range of wavelengths at half half the peak transmittance um, is the peak width at half height of the plot of output versus the wavelength for a wavelength selector okay and when you talk about quality of the filter or the monochromator is the narrower the bandwidth the better the quality okay the higher the quality because that's what you want you want it to be as narrow as possible so we look at the first kind of filter so your sim simpler than this is just the red colored paper or the you know the red plastic sheet or the yellow sheet those are simple simple filters now we talk about interference filters where we can choose uh, a particular filter for a particular wavelength now how do these 
filters work essentially the main the important component in these interference filters is a transparent dielectric layer an example will be um, the layer made up of calcium fluoride or magnesium fluoride and it is sandwiched between two glass plates two metal films sorry so you have the dielectric layer here either calcium fluoride or magnesium fluoride so this whole thing will be the interference filter because you want to see how does an interference filter work or let's back up again every time I, I'd like to check are we all at the same starting line I don't want some to be here and some still you know in a race you want everybody to be starting at the starting line not some still changing the still changing in the changing room changing to the pants so that they can run the race okay so you want everybody to be on the starting line so what is the function of the filters here here back here what is the function of the filter we're talking about wavelength selector we are now looking at the the first category first kind of wavelength selector so what is the purpose what's the purpose what's the function of using this in these filters back up go and look under wavelength selector what is it what do you want to do next to select a particular wavelength okay so and the first one that we are looking at is interference filters so because now we want to know how it works if you don't know what it's for you know and here you are trying to figure out how it works so you must know the use of this filter is as we see here overall before we see how it works white radiation hitting the filter white radiation means many wavelengths okay when you refer to white maybe because we're interested in the visible so we talk about white light is the all the ranging from violet to red v-i-b-g-y-r all the colors of the rainbow or uh, 400 to 700 nanometers but what comes through the filter after it has gone through the filter what we want to happen is you get only a narrow band of radiation narrow band of wavelengths so if we use this filter for 300 nanometers what we want to to the light to come out will be centered at 300 and probably you have some wavelengths below 300 and some above okay so how to see how it works we want to see what is it composed of the important one the middle layer the dielectric layer in between two metal films sandwich and the outer layer are two glass plates as you've shown here okay this is the dive uh, example of the uh, what compounds are used for the dielectric layer two semi-transparent metallic films so when you think of metal maybe you think something reflective okay but this is something semi-transparent which means that some light come come through some light will be reflected not 100% transparent and two plates of glass and this kind of filters are used in the UV visible and IR regions ultimately what we want to try to show is um, if you can't see this on the board I guess you can see it on your on the handouts is that for a particular filter we are talking about uh, eta here this is the index of refraction for the dielectric layer so if you use a different dielectric layer this this value will have a different number and then so when we choose a particular layer this is fixed T is the is the thickness of the okay and here you have order so let's say this order is an integral integral number uh, n is equal to 1 2 3 4 etc uh, integers so if we take the first order n equals to 1 using this filter with a particular thickness the, so T will be fixed eta will be fixed this index of refraction for the dielectric layer so we get uh, for n equals 1 only a certain wavelength will come through okay 
lama-lama ni pun nak mati dah So much for that So much for the pointer That's it Okay um, So we have For a particular filter Only at n equals to 1 One wavelength will come through see how that, how that works okay a and b now defines the dielectric layer so this is the dielectric layer of uh, length t and you have to see how it works we have shown that the light is coming at an angle theta just now we show that the light is coming at 90 degrees right now just to to follow the how you can come up with that equation that was shown just now we we put it in an angle so the incoming radiation comes at an angle theta uh, with respect to the 90 degrees to the normal uh, with the plane of this plane plane of the dielectric layer okay so angle theta as we have said that this uh, outside the dielectric dielectric layer is a semi-transparent metal plate so we get some of the in incoming incident beam being reflected as shown here and some will come through at this second interface the same thing will happen interface between the dielect dielectric layer and the metal part some again will be reflected and some will come through and we are going to get as it hits this part also every at every interface we get some going transmit some transmitted going through and some reflected so we what we want to look now is uh, the interference between this beam and this beam so this beam has gone the path of this beam is directly here whereas this one has gone through here, here, and here. Okay, so there's a difference between the path length of this beam and this beam. Difference in the distance that they have traveled. If the difference between something not on, is that on? If the path length is equal to n times the wavelength of the beam while it's in the dielectric layer then you get constructive interference I mean 100% constructive interference okay so let's say you know directly or it starts um, this is let's say one and then this one also goes here it's directly superimposed the difference between the two um, wavelengths is one one wavelength let's say so that means the two wave waves this and this the constructive interference is 100 percent so you get double the amplitude on the other hand if it's totally out of phase you get zero you get no light I'm not going to go through this trigonometry so this is T you're supposed to figure out if this distance is T this angle is theta you have to figure out what is this this length and this length this okay so the difference between this path of this ray and this ray will be 2 okay This one goes through this, so the distance in the in the dielectric layer is this one. But this one, the path will be this and this. So the difference between the two is actually this plus this. Does everybody see that? The difference between the path length. Because what we what what we want to see now is the difference between the path length of the two. If they are in phase, 100% constructive interference. Okay. 
you get light. If they are out of phase, 100% out of phase, zero light. Zero, zero light com coming through because you have 100% destructive interference where you get the positive and the negative, so you get zero. And you get things in between that, not, uh, that, that are not 100% constructive and not 100% destructive. They all depending on the difference in the path length between these two rays. That's what we're looking at. Um, so I believe that that distance is T over cos theta, but you can check it. Okay, so that means um, this is T cos theta. So the difference between the path length will be double to T cos theta. So we say that um, two, the difference in the path length of the two beams must be n times the wavelength. Where wavelength prime here means wavelength in the dielectric layer. Remember when something goes through uh, a medium of different index with a different index of refraction, the wavelength is different. So land lambda prime here refers to the wavelength of that radiation when it's traveling in the dielectric layer okay so n will be an integer this big n and this n here times the wavelength is equal to 2t over cos theta where we said that what is this 2t cos theta is the difference in the path length travel between the two beams <coughs> now if you insert that that the wavelength in air is equal to the wavelength in the medium times its index of refraction refractive index and that the angle is zero just now with the diagram we showed that it's going at, at a angle theta now we take theta to be zero we can put that in all into the equation and what we get is the wavelength that is transmitted through the filter is 2 times the thickness times the index of refraction of that dielectric layer divided by n. So we, if we have n equals to 1, you get a certain wavelength coming through using a particular filter. So T and index of refraction is fixed. Okay. So if you fix n equals to 1, n on the bottom here, you get one wavelength. If you calculate it for n equals to 2, you get a different wavelength. So in, in reality, the filter that we set is now used to only get one wavelength. In fact, sends out, transmit wavelengths, different wavelengths for different orders. So if we were to look through again, use that equation just now, when you put n equals to 1, n the integer, n on the bottom, when n equals to 1, let's say that the wavelength that is transmitted, that got through the filter, is 900. If we use the same equation, same filter, at the second order, where n equals to 2, you get light coming out at 450. At the third order, n equals to 3, you get light coming out at 300. So this is the, all the same filter, the one filter, but what we find is, in reality, you get light of different orders coming out. And these light at different orders are of different wavelengths. So, you know, you say you use the filter because you want to get one wavelength. But in actuality, this is what happens. So what we do is then try to get rid of this higher order light. How do we do it? Use a combination of the interference filter with some colored glass in order to absorb where this colored glass will absorb this higher order wavelengths so you are left with the first order and usually it's the first order that is the most intense the highest intensity the higher orders are of lower intensity okay so this is how an interference filter works so the important equation there is this for a particular dielectric layer, T is fixed, index of refraction is fixed. So you get 
um, wavelengths at different orders. But we say we keep to the first order and try to eliminate the higher orders. When you talk about higher orders, mean n equals to 2, n equals to 3. Okay, let's now run, run through this. We now give another example. Let's say we take another filter and we find that uh, radiation at the first order that's being transmitted is, let's say, 600. So for a particular filter, at first order, the wavelength of light transmitted through that filter is 600. What is the wavelength of light at second order here? Look at that equation. What equation are we supposed what equation are we supposed to look at? Give me the equation. Lambda equals 2t index of refraction divided by order. So now we know at first order lambda is 600. When n equals 2, what will the wavelength of light being transmitted through that same filter? What is it? Is T the same? No. You, we're using, are we using the same filter? Yes. So is T the same? What is T? It's thickness. T. T is thickness. Index of refraction? Eta? Same. The only difference now is the N on the bottom. N equals to 2. So I'm just asking you, what is the second order of light which can get through that filter? How do I get it? Divided by 2. Just like just now. The difference just now is when n equals to 1, 900. Divided by 2, n equals to 2, 450. Divided by 3, this one divided by 3. So this, similarly, n equals to 2 will be 300. Third order will be 200 and so on. So you get the idea, okay? So for a particular, it's the same filter. Same filter. But, what comes through here will be light of different orders. Coming out, nine, for example, if first order is 900, you get 900, you get 450, you get 300 coming out, all coming out at different wavelengths. But we say, we, what's the purpose of having this filter is so that only one wavelength comes through. So what we want to do is to get rid of the higher orders, the light at n equals to 2, n equals to 3, and whatnot, and whatnot, okay? By using a combination. So you have a filter and you have some colored glass, which then absorbs those higher order light. Because we know that glass, like here is 300 divided by 3, 200. If we were look, to look at your table for material, for cell, windows, lenses, glass absorbs in the UV region. Okay? So these are all high, you know, the, usually the higher orders will, the wavelength becomes smaller and smaller. So that's why you can use, you have to use it in combination with something else, some other material which will absorb the higher order light that will come through the filters. So this is how the interference filters work. And what is shown here is a spectrum or three different, these are three different filters. What is shown here is the light that comes out of the filter. Okay, percent transmittance mean transmittance, what is being transmitted, what can get through the filter. So we have three filters and what we find that is different between these three filters is of course the wavelength at uh, maximum percent T. Here, this filter is used for in the 500 nanometers region. This is angstrom. So divided by 10, you get nanometers. So here is in the 500 nanometers. Here is about, what, 600 over. And this one is used for a higher wavelength, uh, almost 700, okay? So three different filters 
of in three different regions. Okay, these are three three pieces, different filters. And we also see what another thing that's different between these three filters is the effective bandwidth. Effective bandwidth, remember, look at maximum uh, percent transmittance, look at the range of wavelength at half height. So we find that effective bandwidth here is 15 angstrom. Learn to see angstrom. This is an old, you know, a uh, very classic unit for wavelength. How do you change angstrom to uh, SI units? So this is 15, this is broader, this is 45, and this is, is it me or is it the room that's really warm? You can feel it, but you know. What did we say just now? The, I, the high, which, one, which one is of higher quality in terms of the effective bandwidth? The narrow one, the 15. Okay, in terms of bandwidth. But in terms of how much light it transmits, this one is only about how many percent? You know, compared to that one, it transmits more. Transmits more, but the effective bandwidth is wider, 45. So depending on your particular requirements, depending on what wavelength you want, what effective bandwidth you can work with, what effective, uh, you know, or the transmittance you can work with. Another kind of wavelength selector in the same category, not filters, they're called interference wedges. Um, I'm, I'm not, basically, it still uh, has a di dielectric layer, the metallic layer, the glass layer. You have white, uh, white radiation coming through, but the difference there is you have a movable slit, a movable opening there. But the idea is still the same, that you get monochromatic radiation. Monochromatic versus polychromatic. Polychromatic means many wavelengths. Monochromatic means mono, one, one wavelength. Okay, and typical bandwidths, effective bandwidths are 20 nanometers. Used to select several bands of radiation by moving the radi incident radiation across the filter. A third kind that we want to look at filters is called absorption filters. Rather than read, or it's called also known as cut off or band pass filters. Okay, that means uh, this kind of filters it has 100% transmittance over the visible region and rapidly falls off to 0% transmittance. Uh, normally constructed of colored glass, or it's a dye in a gelatin, and usually you combine two filters in order to get a narrow band of transmitters. So you will see what all these words mean when you look at the uh, figure here. Okay, This figure shows you two filters. We are combining two absorption filters. We are combining the green filter. Let's look at the green filter, this one. This shows percent transmittance versus wavelength. If you use a green filter below here, below 450, it shows zero percent transmittance. No light comes through. Okay, anything below here is cut off by this filter. It's absorbed. It didn't get through. As you increase from 450 to beyond, you get increasing light, increasing transmittance at the at the wavelengths. Okay. So between, it will only transmit between, let's say this is about 440 to beyond here lah, I guess 700 over. So the green filter will not send, not transmit light below or above, only here. And it's maximum at about 570 five or something. Okay, that's the green filter. Now we look at the orange cut off filter cut off means as you can see here okay below 5 
thirty, nothing. Above five thirty, yes, it transmits. Okay, you have the green filter and the orange cut-off filter. I'm sure the orange means uh, what is that? Uh, violet. That means probably you know orange light, I suppose. When you combine the two, you put the two together now, and you have light going through. So you have your green filter. Your light is going through both filters, the green as well as the cut orange cut off. So when you, when you have that and the two filters, a combination of the two filters will give you a filter that will transmit light only within this region. Because anything below here will be cut off by the orange filter. So even if the green transmit is still absorbed, okay? This part got through the green but is absorbed by the orange. This part of course the green absorbs the light even though the orange lets through. So in com in combination what is left when you combine the two is only in between. So by using this combination of the green filter and the orange cutoff filter we have now got light that is transmitted within a narrower range of wavelengths. So this is another way of, you know, by combining two filters, you get the same effect, okay? Maximum transmittance is now in 580 maybe. Yeah. Rather than the green filter over white range or the orange cut off, okay? Combination of two absorption filters. Now, uh, more reliable probably is what you have, like what you, um, holographic filters, okay? Uh, not the, I guess the interference filters are you know easier to understand, but the idea here is the same. Uh, used to transmit a certain radiation of a certain uh, wavelength. Okay, now we leave filters, but still staying on the subject of wavelength selector, okay? The simplest way to select a wavelength is to use the filters, that's the simplest way. If you, uh, go, if you uh, one of the instruments that you'll be using, flame photometry, you will be doing um, analysis of sodium, I think, using a flame photometer. Even though you don't physically change the filters, but that instrument is based on uh, using a filter. Uh, the earlier, earlier model of that instrument is yes, you have to take out the filters, then you actually see, okay, for lithium, you put a different filter. For sodium, you put a different filter. But with this one, you don't really physically change the filters, but it's based on a filter, okay? So filters is one way of choosing wavelength. Another category, which is found in more expensive equipment where of course that quality, that effective bandwidth will be narrower are monochromators. Um, used in most scanning monochromators still involving UV visible and IR instruments. Let's look at how they work. Two kinds of filter, two kinds of monochromators here. One which uses a grating where the heart of the monochromator is a grating. We will see how a grating works in due time. The other one, both are monochromators, but this one is based on a prism. So maybe you, let's look at the prism first because maybe we're more familiar with what the prism does to light. Okay? But bearing in mind, the function of the monochromator is the same. To choose so that only a particular wavelength will get through. So in both case, in both kinds of monochromators, whether you use a grating or the prism, you have an entrance slit and a exit slit. A hole, but a very tiny hole with a certain length. So from the name slit, no? from the word slit, okay, it's narrow and has a certain height. It's not even this size, I mean very small, okay, to show that it's just a narrow slit to let the light through and
end and exit slit just like you have an entrance to go into a cinema and an exit you enter one way you go out another way okay entrance exit and here in this particular monochromator it uses lenses you have your collimating lens and your focusing lens you studied lenses in physics use those equations how to focal length of whatever okay so lenses are used to focus things or make light parallel okay for the first one the collimating lens is to collect the light coming through and have a parallel beam hit the prism okay, that's what you have here collecting light in sense of a parallel beam onto the prism and you know the prism let's say is made of some kind of uh, different material, some quartz maybe. So you know at an interface here, you're going to get some change in the change in direction, right? Light coming through here will change direction. Again, you have an in another interface here. So essentially what happens will be different wavelengths will be will come out in different directions. So to make the explanation here, we are saying that light coming through has only two wavelengths lambda one lambda two of course that's not true okay but to make the story simpler for you to understand we say that incoming light is only of two wavelengths lambda one lambda two so what we find here after it comes out after it goes through the first interface second interface we find what is shown here is lambda two and lambda one comes out in two different angles out of the prism interface these two light is then focused onto the exit slit and we find that because it comes out in different direction it is going to be focused on two different points if you were to be if you were the one in this uh, in this focal plane you were standing here so you'll find that lambda one falls here lambda two falls here it's going to be focused at two different positions on the focal plane of this lens of this focusing lens so now, by choosing the position of the prism, if you change the position of this prism, you will choose such that lambda 2 can come out of the slit. Or you can choose such that lambda 1 will come out. Okay. So in the monochromator based on the prism, when you are changing in the actual physics, when you're using an instrument, you're changing some dial to choose wavelength, or you're using the computer what you are doing is actually changing the position of the prism to choose which wavelength you want to let out of the slit okay like i said this is a simple way of thinking about it because you have only two wavelengths but in actual fact you're having many many wavelengths come through and so you have many many wavelengths focus on the different positions so by changing the position of the prism you choose which one you different wavelengths will come out in different directions out of the grating so that's why you find here two lambda one lambda two coming out different directions and you have another concave mirror which then focuses it on the focal plane same idea lambda one lambda two so now you don't change the position of the grating but you change the pris uh, sorry of the prism you change the position of the grating to choose which one will come through okay so this is the idea of the a monochromator uh, slightly different from how the filters work so this is based on diffraction occurring at the grating or at the prism nowadays most of it most monochromators uses uh, gratings When we go back to the prism monochromator, prism must be made of a certain material, okay? And so, what is shown here on the bottom is um, how the light coming out of the prism is dispersed. So, if you were to be on the focal plane, so these lines are the lines on the focal plane here to show how the different wavelengths are dispersed that's what we're looking at when we show this line here okay 
So if you were to be using a glass prism, because glass compared to quartz, the uh, refractive index is different. So it will split the the different wavelengths in a different way. Okay, Disperse, dispersion is different for the for glass and quartz. As we see here, this is the line. Below 350, no light comes through. Glass absorbs. And look at the different wavelengths. 400, how, how it is dispersed, okay? 400 to 800. For the quartz, it doesn't absorb uh, wavelength between 200 to 800. And the dispersion is somewhat different. Okay, if we compare, if we want to look at the dispersion. Um... between 300 to 400 well, although that one doesn't have 300 let's see 400 to 6 400 to 5 is this distance okay 400 to 500 is dispersed within this distance here 400 to 500 is squeezed okay squeeze that means you have many wavelengths squeeze so you maybe you cannot distinguish between it as well as if it was spread if the different numbers are spread better you can see them you can distinguish them better, okay? But the difference there is, of course, glass does not absorb, uh, does not let through light below 350. So this is the dispersion when you use a monochromator based on prism, where glass and quartz, different kinds of dispersion. However, why is it better that most monochromators now use grating? Because look at the dispersion. Linear dispersion, okay? Same. The dispersion is the same. Here, 400, 400, 500 is here. But as you get to higher wavelengths, it becomes squeezed. That means higher wavelengths, more difficult to distinguish using a prism compared to a grating where the dispersion is very similar throughout the, wave, uh, throughout the range of wavelengths that it can be used for. So the advantage of the gratings is that it disperse radiation linearly as a function of wavelength. And before we get into all this, I want you to, for the next class, to write something on the lasers and uh, to read this part on uh, dispersion for gratings. What angular dispersion is, what linear dispersion is, what reciprocal linear dispersion is, okay, under gratings for the next class.